history. So that sounds good. Um, so welcome everyone to the uh, first of many um, AISD health advocate webinars. Um, this is something that we are going to be doing on an ongoing basis. And um, each uh, webinar is going to cover different topics based on the various areas that each of us are involved in with the district and throughout the benefits team. So um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get started. This is a recorded webinar and it will be available on YouTube. So if you hear of any coworkers saying that they missed it, you know, spread the word, let them know that we will be having more and that they can watch all of this information on YouTube. And we'll be sharing that more than likely tomorrow once we get um, the video saved and uploaded onto the page. Um, we are the uh, AISD Health and Benefits Advocate Team. Um, my name is Lee, and you're going to be hearing from uh, myself, Christina Shepard, Joy Campbell, and Jamie Pratt, and we are all your health resources at the district. So it's really important to us that you guys know who we are and that you guys know how, what benefits are available to you. So that's what we're going to talk about during this series. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to turn this over to Christina Shepard, and we're going to get started. Excellent. Thanks, Lee. All right. I am the host now. Perfect. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, like Lee said, my name is Christina Shepard, and I am one of your AISD benefit ambassadors. So I'm going to be talking a whole lot today just about our benefits program in general and offering some quick tips and tricks. In future webinars, we'll be going into more detail about some of our benefit options and benefit topics. So I wanted to start it off um, and just kind of warm everybody up to this idea because usually when you hear benefits, not a lot of people get excited. I get excited because benefits are my jam, but I know a lot of people are like, oh, I don't know. So I have a quick quiz or a poll and you can put your answers in the chat. Um, but which do you spend more time doing each day? Well, each day, but um, do you spend more time deciding what to watch on Netflix? Or do you think you spend more time during open enrollment making your benefit elections for the year? And so I'll go ahead and give you a couple of seconds to put your answers there in the chat. There's no wrong answer. Netflix, <laughs> gotcha, Ginger. There's so many fun choices on Netflix, right? We're excited to watch a movie, but we're not necessarily so excited to look at our benefit plans. And so on average, Netflix users spend about 18 minutes looking for what show they wanna watch each day. Um, meanwhile, Americans spend an average of just 17 minutes making their open enrollment elections. And a lot of that comes down to, you know, a lot of times you're just choosing what you had last year. It worked okay last year. We're going to do it again this year, um, but not really putting as much research and thought into it when it's a decision that you're going to be saddled with for the remainder of the next year. So it is an important decision. And my goal as a benefit ambassador is really to just make that decision a lot easier for you and a lot simpler, as simple as logging into Netflix and finding your next show to binge watch. So that is what I'm here to do. So hello, it's nice to meet you. Um, a little bit about me, as I said before, benefits are my jam. I get excited, I'm passionate about it. I've been working with insurance and benefits for 11 years now. So definitely have some experience um, and really, my passion comes from customer service and making sure that everyone feels good and confident um, about their benefit elections because it's such an important decision. So that is what I'm here to do. Um, insurance can be written in what seems like a whole nother language and I'm here to be your translator. All right, so what exactly does a benefit ambassador do? This is a pilot program with the district. So I'm here to be your personal subject matter expert for all things benefits. If you have a question about your plan, it's something as simple as, hey, I don't remember what plan I signed up for. Did I add vision? I'm here to help you with that. If you want to know where do I find network providers, I'm here to help with that. If you have a claim issue and you're not quite sure what's going on, I'm here to help with that. So those are some of the things that we can do um, in those resources. I'm also here to empower you to get the most out of your benefit elections. So 
your benefits, you're making a significant investment in your healthcare for the next year, as is the district. And so we really want to ensure that all of our employees feel good about what they're paying for and what they're receiving. And sometimes that's just a matter of education and making sure that you know what benefits are available to you and really how to utilize them to their best potential. Um, and then back to that customer service, I am a helper, I'm a compulsive helper, um, and I really wanna provide top tier customer service to all of our AISD employees. Um, and that involves meeting you where you're at. So you will be seeing benefit ambassadors visiting you on your campuses. Um, we will come and do a staff presentation at a staff meeting or a department meeting. And I'm also available for virtual one-to-one -one meetings. So you might see this like QR code over here. Um, if you scan that with your phone, it's gonna take you to a booking page and you can actually just schedule an appointment with me to ask any benefit related questions. I'm here from the first time you enroll um, while you're employed here and then say you decide to retire and you wanna know what happens to your benefits after that, I'm here to help guide you through that entire process. So um, you can schedule there if it's a quick question or if you just wanna review what you've elected and get the most out of it. And so um, just to share a couple of quick tips, I'm also going to drop this sheet in the chat for everyone so that you have access to it. But a couple of just quick tips to get the most out of your benefits. First of all, exploring your options. So I talked a little bit earlier about Netflix and how, especially with benefits, we tend to go on autopilot. We just enroll in the exact same thing that we had last year because it was good enough um, without necessarily looking at some of the options available. So we do offer multiple medical plans and it's important to compare them and really decide which is best for you and for your family. Um, so there's a lot of resources available to do that. And we have information everywhere. Our benefit portal, which is www.austinisdbenefits.com has an entire reference library with all of the information. Of course, our benefit guide is another great place to find benefits information. And then the benefits app, which I'm gonna talk about here in just another moment. So we have some really great resources available to you. And then of course you can always just call us and ask questions. So our benefits office is here to help. 90% um, of the time we can save you a call to the insurance company. Um, we can answer most questions in house or help resolve like claim issues, things like that. So nobody wants to stay on hold with an insurance company, give our office a call, we'll take care of it in most cases. Um, other important tips, staying in network. So with our plans, it is imperative that you stay in network to avoid having any unforeseen charges. And the best way to stay in network is just to double check that your provider is in network. And one of my big insurance tips for everybody, I tell my friends this, never ask a doctor if they just accept your insurance because they might accept it, they might send the bill but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're in network. So it's really important to just ask, hey, are you in my network? Can you verify this before you see them or have any services? Um, knowing where to go. So, you know, you wanna make sure that you're picking the best care option for your particular situation. If you have a cough or a cold, emergency room may not be the best place for you to seek care. You're gonna be paying more out of pocket that way. We have a lot of other options like our telehealth through ReadyMD, CVS Minute Clinics, your primary care provider. Um, there's several other like urgent cares around the area that you could see and pay a lot less out of pocket. Um, we have medical savings accounts, HSA and FSA. If you're confused about what the difference between those two things are, we will help you navigate that. Um, and then taking advantage of some of our initiatives. So Jamie's gonna talk a lot about our wellness initiatives and of course, Lee's gonna talk about our health management programs, both of which can help you um, really maximize your insurance benefits here with the district. And then last, the AISD benefits app. So this is what I wanted to focus on for this particular webinar because I think it is a fantastic tool. Um, through the benefits app, you actually have access to all of your benefits information right at your fingertips and it's a single sign on. So if you don't want to have to remember eight different logins, you don't necessarily have to if you have the benefit app. Um, the other thing about it is that it is personalized to you. So you're gonna see your elections, you're gonna be able to look at your benefits, you're not gonna see vision if you didn't enroll in vision. Um, so through the benefit app, you can get an access to your ID cards, 
if you didn't bring it with you, you lost it, you misplaced it, you can actually do that through the app. Um, you can get information, all of our benefits information. We do a did you know um, series, so you can access that information. Finding somebody that's in network, if you want to check out your well being and your um, wellness points, you can do that through here. Discounts, information about leads, all of our different benefits that we offer. Um, so, also another QR code, and you can scan that to download it if you haven't done so already. So I think that is everything I have there. I do have a couple of minutes. If there are any questions, I'm happy to answer those. So you can drop them in the chat. Otherwise, I will pass it off to Ms. Joy Campbell, who is our on-site mental health resource. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it on to you, Miss Joy. If somebody does ask a question in the chat, I'll go ahead and just answer it right there and I'll drop in those links that I promised. You knew I was gonna do that and forget to unmute myself. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hello, everybody. I am Joy Campbell. I am the on-site EAP counselor. I am also bilingual, hablo espanol. So if somebody wants to uh, call and speak in Spanish, I can also do that. To tell you a little bit about um, what I do is um, I provide the four free sessions that the district gives each employee. Unfortunately, I can't work with the staff, I'm sorry, the family members. So I'm dedicated to the staff. So I work for CompSych, but I'm dedicated to Austin ISD. So sometimes people are, uh, concerned about confidentiality, you know, what can I say, what can I not say, you can say whatever it is that you want, everything is taken with the utmost confidentiality. Um, so again, I am the Employee Assistance Program on-site counselor. You get four free 45-minute sessions with me. They can be um, structured, not structured. I have a lot of people that say I don't know where to start or they know exactly where they want to start. So either way is fine. I am here for you regardless. So um, what I tell people is call me whenever you need to, email me whenever you need to. I usually can fit you in that day. If, if I answer the phone, I can probably talk to you right then. So the goal is for me to be your resource when you need it. Um, and hopefully those that have utilized it, you know, realize that it really is that easy. It really is that accessible. So how do you get in touch with me? Well, you call me or you email me, and I think um, Lee's gonna drop in the how to get a hold of me here at some point. Um, but it's done through secure video. I mean, we try to keep it as safe and confidential as possible. Some of the typical topics that may come up are, um, hey, I'm super frustrated at work. Hey, I'm super frustrated at home. Um, I'm having you know problems with my kids. So I have a wide variety of things that I have done over the years. So chances are I probably have some decent ideas on how to help you figure out how to problem solve something. Um, my background, I have a master's in marriage and family. I've worked with individuals and children and families for the past 13 years, wide variety of issues. So uh, chances are I've got something in my toolbox that will help. Um, the therapy with me is short term. So it's only four sessions, but we can get quite a bit done in four sessions, believe it or not. If um, at some point we both agree, yeah, I think you know, longer term therapy is probably helpful, then we can figure out how to transition you, you know, to a therapist that takes your insurance, that kind of thing. We don't just wanna you know, dump you when the four is over. We wanna make sure you have that you know, continuity of care. Um, so yeah, identify problem solving, you know, kind of identifying what you can best do. Um, I think, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but sometimes people wait until they can't take it anymore. So when they call me, they feel like they're just dumping everything. That is fine. <laughs> that's what I'm here for. <laughs> so don't feel like that's a problem. Um, one of the misconceptions of therapy is that um, there must be something wrong with me or I must be crazy or, you know, only crazy people seek therapy. That is not true. Please know that I am here to support you. There is, you know, I'm, I'm here to do, I guess, whatever it is that you need that helps you regain your footing. 
um, whatever it is that knocked you off of that, whether it's relationship issues, some self-doubt, self-esteem, work-life stress, you know, let's just sit and talk. Let's figure out what it is that you need. And I'm very, very happy to help. Um, let's see. I don't think I missed anything, but I may have. Does anybody have any questions? I tend to talk really fast, so I apologize if I talked way fast. Is there a network of available counselors or does everyone schedule with Joy? That is a great, great question. So for the four sessions, you schedule with me. You can call me directly. Now there is an outside network. I know you can call Revive EAP and that's the 1-800 number. So you can access it that way as well. It's typically faster to get your four sessions to call me. But if somebody feels more comfortable doing that, then that is available as well. What other questions might somebody have? Joy, I have a question for you. Yes. Um, so are individual sessions all that you offer and are they always virtual? Thank you. Um, individual sessions, <laughs> you're always my guider. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, yes, they're always individual. Unfortunately, I can't do couples or family, that kind of thing in this, um, in this context. And they can be via phone or they can be virtual. Yeah, the, the reason we offer that and the reason I think it works really well is because people can call me on their lunch, on their way home, on their way to work, um, on their conference period. You know, it can be phone or, or, you know, the secure Zoom, whichever way that they prefer to do that. You can get me as early as 745 all the way to 445. So hopefully somewhere in there would work for someone. All right, what else did I miss? Are you ever on campus anywhere? I know with the critical incidents, I can be on campus. Um, I know we've had people reach out for, can you come and give us a safe place to talk? Can you come, you know, run a group for an hour, hour and a half? I'm absolutely happy to do that. Um, I haven't had any requests that I know of for any kind of trainings, that's available as well. So yes, I could be on campus. Typically the sessions are gonna be via phone or virtual, but yes, I could absolutely be on campus. Does an employee have to have the AISD health insurance to visit with you? That's an excellent question. I thought the answer was no. I might want to look into that. I'm going to note that. Would that be a question for the you? The answer is no. You don't have to have AISD insurance. Thank you. That is what I thought. Okay, perfect. Wonderful. Any other questions? So it sounds like anybody, as long as you're a staff member, can utilize these four free confidential sessions. Yeah. All right. Am I passing it to Jamie or Lee? To, okay. On to you. Thank you very much, Joy. Um, uh, my name is Lee Ennis. And I am the on-site um, wellness coordinator uh, alongside Jamie, and I manage the district's condition management programs. If you don't know about those programs, um, so far we have four. Um, the condition management programs, we have a diabetes engagement program. We have a pregnancy resource toolkit. We have a program called Wonder Health, and we have a tobacco cessation program. Um, so all of these programs essentially work towards bettering our population's health as a whole here at AISD. So I wanted to talk a little bit today about some of the things and some of the essentially risk factors that feed into things that could essentially cause you to be diabetic, um, you know, being a smoker, things like that. So I wanted to talk about that risk today. So I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, it's not working. Let's see. Uh, 
How about that? Can everyone see my screen? Okay. So I wanted to start today with um, just a quick, did you know? So this slide is pretty indicative. Um, if you look here, we have cancer, stroke, heart disease, and diabetes. I guarantee every single one of us on this call um, has had some sort of experience with this, whether it was personally, a friend, a family member, all of us know at least one person in our lives, if not many more, that have dealt with one of these four conditions. These are the four most prevalent conditions in the United States that people deal with. Um, the thing that's really crazy about these is these chronic conditions, they do take a lifetime to develop, but most of them are lifestyle related and they are preventable through things like early detection and risk factor modification. Um, the reason that this is so important is early detection could save your life. So if you look at this chart here, you have things like cancer, these uh, stroke risks, heart disease, and you see how far diabetes is up there. These are the deaths in the United States alone that were preventable and could have been prevented from these conditions if early detection had occurred. So the reason that this is so important is that it could save your life. A lot of the people that I work with in these programs, I say, hey, it's great that you're here, you're at the right place, but I don't want you in this program long-term. You know, We wanna teach you what you need to know to advocate for yourself health-wise going forward so you don't end up in these condition factors. Um, so the first question that I ask everyone is, are you at risk or do you know if you're at risk? So when three or more of these um, risk factors are present, you are at risk. So waist measurement here, if you have a waist measurement over 40 inches for men or over 35 inches for women, or if you have a BMI of 25 or greater, that's considered a risk factor. Elevated triglycerides, any triglycerides, over 150, that's another risk factor. Um, having a low HDL. HDL is your good cholesterol, and we're gonna talk about all of these a little bit more in depth here. Um, but if you have a low HDL, less than 40 for men or less than 50 for women, that's also considered a risk factor. If you have an elevated blood pressure, anything over 130, over 85, and a fasting blood glucose, anything under or anything over 100. So when three or more of these green risk factors are present, your risk of developing heart disease is double and your diabetes risk is increased five times. So this here alone, this is why it is so important for you to know these numbers. So how do we find out these numbers? I'm sure you guys have received communications from the school district um, and the benefits team over the past year or two about the importance of your annu annual preventive screenings. When you're on the AISD medical plans, you are allowed one preventive annual screening a year where they go through and they talk about these numbers. Keep in mind that on this page, what puts you at risk is not what is considered necessarily healthy. This is just an indicator of how unhealthy America is at this point, that these are normal values. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that a little bit further on. So just keep that in mind. So this is why it is so important to know your numbers. Um, this chart here, this is information. This is essentially what you will see when you go to the doctor and say, hey, I wanna have my annual screenings done. Um, depending on your particular health situation, your age and your sex, you may see things like vitamin D, TSH, which measures your thyroid, uh, PSA for men, which is a prostate antigen, or measurements of kidney and liver enzymes. These are common tests that doctors will add on to these preventive exams. You do have the, um, the authority to tell your doctor if they mention this, that no, I don't want to add these onto the exam because it can be an added cost outside of that free preventive screening. So keep that in mind. But also you always do wanna follow the um, recommendation of your doctor. So if you say to your doctor, you know what? I don't, I don't think that I want to have uh, my TSH measured because, you know, I just don't want to pay extra. He may come back and tell you, well, you know, depending on what you've shown me over the past couple of years, I think it's a good idea to test your thyroid just to, you know, rule out any underlying conditions. So be very um, comfortable having these conversations with your doctor because that's, you know, where the power lies. We want you to be confident when you go into these appointments. And when they say, hey, we want to run these tests, we want you to know what they are and we want you to know what questions to ask. Um, 
what I included here in this graph is a very, um, it's a very vague description. Um, I have the test description and then I have optimal ranges. So these are the typical things that you're gonna see on your lab results when you go in for those annual screenings. We're gonna elaborate more in detail on the next slides, but I wanted to go over the optimal ranges for each. So your total cholesterol, um, we wanna make sure that when you get those back that they're under 200. Your total cholesterol is a uh, combination of your HDL, which is your good cholesterol, and your LDL, which is your bad cholesterol. Your HDL, we want that to be as high as possible because that is your defense against heart attack um, causing plaque and buildup in your arteries. That's your LDL. We want that to be as low as possible. So anything under 100. A lot of times if you go into your doctor and they say, hey, your total cholesterol is way too high, they're going to look at your HDL and your LDL. And if your HDL is over 59, a lot of times they will cancel it out and say, you know what, your good cholesterol is in a healthy enough range that you have a high enough defense against that total cholesterol being so high. So that's not a risk factor for you. So just remember, you want that HDL to be over 59 and the LDL under 100. For triglycerides, this is going to be the lipids in your blood. So essentially it's your blood fat. You want that to be under 150. Glucose, that is your blood sugar. Um, this is a big reason that when you go into doctor's offices and they say, hey, you're going to have labs at your next visit, make sure you fast. You want to make sure that you're getting a true reading of this glucose. If I was to go into the doctor and have my labs done and I ate a big bowl of Fruit Loops before I came in, it's a really sugary cereal. And then I had that blood work done. It's going to give me a pretty high range. It's more than likely going to be well over 100. And that's going to trigger a test and it's going to show that I may be at risk for diabetes. So it's really important that if your doctor tells you to fast, when you go in for this, that you're actually fasting and making sure that you're getting the most accurate reading to avoid additional tests. Um, this value below glucose, this is your hemoglobin A1C, or it's commonly known as HbA1C. So if you go to the doctor and your glucose is flagged over 100 on a, a repetitive basis or more than once or twice, they're gonna trigger this HbA1c test. This HbA1c is a 90 day average of what your glucose looks like. So that's taking into consideration those that don't fast, that's taking into consideration people, you know, who may not have the most accurate glucose readings. That's gonna give you just a better picture of what that looks like over a 90 day average. Anything on this value over seven is going to warrant a diabetes diagnosis. So if you go in, you have that glucose taken and it's over 100, and then they test it. Usually they'll do it after the second time if you have um, repetitive uh, results year after year. If it's over that seven, they will typically prescribe medication for diabetes. For the systolic and diastolic blood pressure, we want that to be 120 over 80 or less, okay? This is what we talked about, keeping in mind that this number is less than what we talked about on that risk factor page. That risk factor page, anything over 130, over 85 or above, that puts you at risk. But this is what's considered optimal for health, okay? We then have your BMI, your body mass index, that's a height to weight ratio. We want that to be between 18.5 and 24.9. If that number dips a little bit too low between 18, below 18.5, that can be indicative of a nutrient deficiency um, and that's going to be symptoms of low body fat or low body weight, and that can be problematic as well. Anything over 24.9 or above is going to put you in that high risk category. And at the very bottom, we have your waist circumference. For males, we want that to be under 40 inches, and for females, we want that to be under 35 inches. Um, I always talk about this last waist circumference because it can kind of be taboo. You know, you go to the doctor and you're like, oh, no, no, I know I'm overweight. I know I'm overweight. I don't want you to, you know, measure my waist. The reason this is important, it's not the doctor coming in and saying, hey, we want you to be skinny or we want you to, you know, be this ideal person. What they're saying is if you think about your waist and you think about the area of your belly button and the circumference and all of the organs that are inside of that area, you've got your pancreas, you've got your stomach, you've got your kidney, you've got liver, everything that is essential for your body functioning the way that it should and providing you with optimal health. We want all of those organs to function freely. We want there to be adequate blood flow. We don't want there to be any issues. When there's excess fat in that area, what happens is it compresses those organs. It's kind of like putting everyone into a really small room. 
So if you're one person in a room that's, you know, smaller than normal, you know, you're going to be able to move freely and you'll, you'll, you'll be fine. If you put 10 people in that small room, people are going to get hot. People are going to get crowded. They're going to get a little cranky. You're not going to function as efficiently as you would if you were in that open room by yourself. So that's why it's so important to make sure that you don't have excess fat in that area compressing those organs because that's going to kind of hinder their function. Um, as we're talking about cholesterol, so this is where I spoke on, you know, we're going to break each of these values down. Um, like I said, the total range for cholesterol, we want it to be under 200. As we talked about earlier, your good cholesterol is your HDL. This is called high density lipoprotein. Okay, this is your defense against the bad cholesterol or that LDL, low density lipoprotein. Um, so that HDL, the good cholesterol, that's gonna come from plant-based fats, things like nuts, seeds, um, avocados, um, things that are high in fiber, leafy greens, um, omega-3 fatty acids, things like uh, fatty fish, things of that nature. So you wanna eat more of those things. You wanna eat less of your LDL contributors. These are gonna be animal fats. These are going to be things like fast food, saturated fats, uh, sugared processed foods. These are gonna be the things that are gonna drive up that high cholesterol or that bad cholesterol. So you wanna eat more plant-based, eat less animal-based, eat less processed and eat less you know, triglyceride friendly foods. So remember your LDL, you want that to be under 100 and you want your good cholesterol, your HDL to be over 59. So always keep that in mind. For the glucose and triglycerides, things that are gonna to contribute to those, you've got your fast foods, you've got alcohol. I say it all the time, um, you know, baked breads, uh, I call it white fluffy stuff, donuts, cakes, muffins, pastries. So things that as we're eating them, we know they taste really, really good, but they're probably not contributing to our best health. These are the things that you want to start to decrease, um, as well as, you know, soda is a huge contributor to um, ridiculous glucose levels. So if you want to decrease those things, you want your glucose range to be under 100, like we talked about. And anything higher than that on an ongoing basis will follow or will uh, contribute to some follow up with your doctor and eventually an HbA1c test. Your triglycerides or those fat levels in your blood, you want that to be less than 150. Um, and like we just mentioned, eating less uh, breads, baked goods, things made with white flour. This is where it comes in. They say if you're going to have, you know, grains or a lot of uh, carbohydrate rich foods, that you want to make sure that you're eating brown rice, whole grains, um, things that are enriched with wheat, um, things of that nature. You want to decrease those sugar based items and you want to start eating less of those empty calorie foods and beverages. I really wanted to include sodas in here and alcohol because that's a very big contributor to those empty calories and sugary beverages. Those are things that will definitely drive those values up. Um, blood pressure, this is one that's really important, okay? Um, there are no signs and symptoms typically of high blood pressure. 25% uh, of Americans high blood, have high blood pressure and a third of them don't even know it. The reason that they don't know it, you know, a lot of times people have gotten so used to living with the symptoms or um, feeling the way that it feels to have high blood pressure that that feels normal. And they, they don't know that there's an issue until they have a bigger problem, okay? It is the number one modifiable risk factor for stroke, okay? Um, I've talked a lot about those optimal ranges and paying attention to what is considered healthy your risk for heart disease or stroke actually starts to increase at 115 over 75 or above, okay? Keeping in mind, optimally, you want it to be 120 over 80 or less. So what's considered optimal in the United States, you are still at risk for heart disease and stroke. So as you're looking at these numbers, set that 115 over 75 as a personal best for you to shoot for when it comes to your blood pressure. Um, and I just wanted to put this in here. I hear this all the time. I'm sure my blood pressure is fine. There's no need for me to check it. A lot of times we don't know there's a problem until there's actually a problem. So staying on top of these things and getting these values and knowing what they are and what they mean to you, it's really important. Um, I wanted to include in here ranges for blood pressure because blood pressure can kind of fluctuate and everyone has different readings. Okay. So Normal blood pressure, like we talked about, 120 over 80 or below. I want you to make sure that you're shooting for that personal best, though, of 115 
over 75 or below. Um, anyone who has re repeat ranges, 120 to 139 over 80 to 89, that's gonna be a prehypertensive range. Your doctor may tell you to kind of keep an eye out on that. Sometimes when we go in for physicals or um, doctor's visits, we get what's called white coat syndrome. And it's really typical for us to be nervous and that we go up into that prehypertensive range pretty quick. So it's always a good idea that when you go to the doctor and if it's a little bit higher than normal, you can ask them to take a couple minutes, let you calm down a little bit, and then uh, take it from there and take it again to see if it's changed at all. Where you're gonna get in trouble is when you're getting into repeat readings of the hypertensive ranges, okay? Stage one hypertension is going to be 140 over 159 over 90 to 99. So this is when you're gonna to start to really have to monitor it. You may even be under care with a doctor and you may be on medication. Um, stage two hypertension, this is a really dangerous thing. If you're getting readings 160 over 100 or higher, even if that's something that feels normal to you, please go to your doctor because this is when you're really gonna be at risk for those things like heart attack and stroke. Um, some tips on how do I manage my blood pressure. Uh, lifestyle modifications, like we talked about, eating a well-balanced and varied diet, uh, decreasing your salt and sodium intake. Salt and sodium do contribute to higher blood pressure levels. Um, achieving a healthy weight. Uh, exercise regularly. Even if you don't have time to sit there and go to the gym or, you know, dedicate an hour a day, making opportunities for exercise and optimizing those opportunities that you do have. Christina talked about how much time we spend on Netflix, um, screen time on our cell phones. These are all things we can say, oh my gosh, I don't have enough time. But if you're able to pull things up and say, okay, I'm, I need to put this into perspective. I have an hour that I spend on my phone a day. Maybe I spend 30 to 45 minutes of that walking. I can take a walk around uh, my parking lot. Jamie does that all the time. She makes opportunities for exercise and she takes advantage of them. And it's a really smart thing to do. Um, we talked about this on the last slide, limiting alcohol intake. And if you are a smoker, don't smoke. That's another thing that really drives up your blood pressure. Um, finally, this one's very important. If you are prescribed medication to manage your blood pressure, please take it as directed. Um, I hear a lot that people don't like the way that they feel when they take it. Sometimes you may experience side effects like fatigue or dizziness. If you're experiencing those issues, please share them with your doctor. This is, again, those opportunities where we want you to feel comfortable when you're going in for care and making sure that they know what you're dealing with and saying, hey, this medication isn't working for me. Is there something else that we can try that may fit into my lifestyle better? Um, and finally, we're gonna end on this one. Uh, the BMI and waist measurement readings that we talked about, um, there are some contributors to long-term and sustainable weight loss. These came from the National Weight Registry in the United States. Those who have experienced long-term and sustainable weight loss, 98% of them did modify their food intake, 94% of them increased physical activity, 78% of them eat breakfast every day. It's really important that you're eating breakfast when you wake up to stimulate your metabolism. 62% uh, of these individuals watch less than 10 hours of TV per week, uh, and 90% of them exercise on average an hour a day. And Keeping in mind that exercising on average an hour a day doesn't mean, hey, I've got to go walk on a treadmill or, you know, lift weights really heavy. You know, think about opportunities for exercise that you do have. If you don't have a full hour, take three 20 minute breaks throughout the day to make up that hour. It's really important to make sure that you're doing what works for you. So this is um, the conclusion of what I had for prevention and the importance of, again, knowing your numbers and having those regular preventive screenings. Um, if anyone has any questions, you can drop them in the chat box. I know I gave a lot of information today, so even further, I'm gonna be including my contact information in the chat as well, so you can contact me via email or phone if, if, if needed as well. Okay, and if we don't have any Julie, I will reach out to you. Thank you very much for this. Let's see. So I am sensitive. And, and yes, Julie, I see that. Um, like I said, a lot of those diseases like I, that we included on that first slide, 
um, this, that's not saying that they're all preventable. That's just saying, you know, a lot of them could be prevented. A lot of the deaths from them could be prevented if people are staying on top of them and early detection and making um, modifiable changes. But again, that's not saying that all of them, that that's the case. Um, but I will reach out to you to clarify further. Thank you. And Jamie, I'm going to pass this over to you. Great, thank you. All right. Okay, so uh, before I share my screen, I'm just gonna give you guys a little bit of information. So my name is Jamie. I am the other wellness coordinator. So essentially, I uh, handle our wellness program, our employee wellness program, the online portal, our district challenges. You may have seen some marketing materials for those. Um, I make campus visits and really all things wellness. Uh, now it's very overarching. There's a lot of things to cover, but I'm just gonna give you guys a high level overview of some of the other wellness resources that are available to you. So um, first I just wanna review our actual wellness program vision. Uh, so I'm going to read it off of my notes, but uh, our vision is to provide an innovative wellness program for employees that empowers them to live a healthier life, rewards healthy lifestyle behavior, and fosters a culture of engagement through interactive and impactful services. Now, I know that's a very long <laughs> vision, uh, but in short, we essentially say, be well, do good. So you've probably seen BWDG around the district uh, with our really fun colors. That's a very simple way to remember and connect it to our vision of why we have an employee wellness program and why I'm here and why we care so much here at AISD about your health, your happiness, feeling good, uh, you know, being a part of it, but not only being a part of it, but being engaged. So with the wellness program, you know, we don't want to just put a Band-Aid on anything, a temporary fix, um, you know, and just reward point and click behaviors. We really want you guys to be engaged and to enjoy the wellness program, because when you feel good, you're happier, you're healthier, this trickles down into our students as well, and really all throughout the district. So it's a group effort, and we're all pretty connected with it. And I will say the wellness program is pretty fun. <laughs> I get to talk to you guys all the time. We get to talk to each other and it's really enjoyable. So a little bit about the program. I am going to share my screen now so that you guys can see this. Okay, can you all see my PDF document? Okay, perfect. So this is our program overview. This right here is what the uh, online portal looks like. Uh, you may have seen it. Uh, it. It pretty much looks just like this with a few more photos on it. Um, but again, here we have Be Well, Do Good. This is our program guide. We try and organize everything within the program into these simple, fun ways to remember. So we say stay healthy, wealthy, wise, and well. So it's easier for you guys to find resources, for example, stay wealthy, financial resources, uh, stay wise, mental health resources. Uh, we try and make it very user friendly so it's easy for you to find what you're looking for and what's going to be most beneficial. So down here, we do have our website. So if you actually go to austinisdwellness.com, which is hopefully very easy to remember, but you can also bookmark it, um, that is where you log into the portal. If you ever have any problems getting in, logging in, setting up an account, just let me know. I'm happy to help. Um, but really, we have everything on here. So I can also send you guys this uh, document because it really outlines everything. And I'll scroll down to the next page as well. But it is open to all active employees. Uh, the incentive points go off of the calendar year. So they do reset every December 31st. But that is a long time. And there's lots and lots of opportunities to get points. So we do, like we said, reward healthy lifestyle behaviors, and they help you um, sustain behavior change long term in these healthy lifestyles, as opposed to just, you know, one time activities that are not sustainable. Here we have our vision again. But if I scroll down here, so here's our website one more time. 
This gives a little bit more information about participation, activities that we have. And down here is an example of the point structure. So we do have quarterly district challenges. I administer those. I'm, a very, I'm very active in them. I help you guys. We have a social wall. We discuss our progress. Like I said, it's very engaging. Uh, you know, it's not just sitting there very complacently and not really participating as much. It's really there to help you guys build behavior change skills as opposed to doing an activity. So then you can translate them into your own lives. We can practice them together. Uh, we have accountability buddies, which is a great way to really keep up with things that you're trying to accomplish. For example, healthy goals. Um, I can also be your accountability buddy. Uh, if you ever want to walk around with me during the day, <laughs> like we said, I'm always walking around the parking lot when I have a few minutes. Um, but if we look here on the program activities, you can see quarterly challenges, but we also have monthly wellness activities to kind of give you options throughout the entire year. We have uh, webinars, we reward activity minutes. Uh, we do have social wall discussion points now so that if you are able to participate with other employees in the district. Um, I've seen some really great comments, some really great stories. It's definitely one of my favorite parts of the entire program. Okay. Also, I just do want to remind you that with activity minutes, you can sync your wearable trackers to our portal. But if you don't have a wearable tracker, or if you are uh, maybe not the best with technology, um, or just not really on your radar, then you can also do it manually. So that is an option. Um, it's very, very simple. Like I said, we try and make it as user friendly as possible. And then as you do that, it automatically gives you points. So you can get gift cards, fun swag, you get lifetime activity minutes, and uh, something that's really fun is every month we highlight one of the employees in the district for wellness activities or news or fun things that they have going on. So everybody kind of gets to um, share and really connect with each other in a positive way. So I love that. And let's see. This is just a little bit more about the portal. Again, here, this is what it looks like if you do recognize it. We kind of focus on earn, learn, and engage. So here's that word engage again. If you are going to log into the portal, we definitely try and offer things that are engaging, that are going to help you. So I know that all of this information that you've gotten today is probably very overwhelming. There's many, many resources. Uh, one thing that I can say is uh, we don't want you to feel overwhelmed to the point where you don't use any of them. I will say, you know, maybe your priorities will change over time from day to day. If you familiarize yourself with the resources that are available, kind of like what Joy said and even what we said, you may not really utilize them until something is wrong or you really need it sooner. So familiarizing yourself with everything that's available when something comes up and you you know, think, hey, I remember something that I saw that could be really beneficial, you'll know where to find it and you'll have really easy access to it. So that's something that we recommend, just spending some time on the portal with the wellness program, practicing your skills so that you're able to, again, live happier, live healthier, everything like that. Also, Christina did mention this because it is the benefits and wellness app. Um, so I have our other flyer. Here's another QR code. Um, but with the app, uh, like she said, it is a single sign-on feature, so you can connect it to the online wellness portal. It will log in as a single sign-on feature. It is so convenient. I have it on my own phone. Um, you can click on most things, and they will either be a link, or it could even be a phone number or an email to one of us, to other resources in the district. We have wellness vendors like Camp Gladiator, Arosti, we do have EAP, which is ComPsych or Guidance Resources. Um, I'm trying to think, we have Foundation 99. We have a bunch of other entities that you could actually get beneficial services and resources from. And with the app, I highly recommend it because it's all on your phone. And we know that we're all on our phones all the time. So really having it at your fingertips. Like I said, if you know what could be helpful to you and you know where to find it, it is going to be helpful for you at the right time. So highly recommend it. If anyone needs help with the app, uh, you can absolutely let one of us know because I can also give you a little bit of a tutorial because I'm in it all day long. 
so much see. And then um, this is the last thing that I have to share on my screen. But something else that I want to tell you about is um, it's very relevant to what Lee was mentioning. On our wellness portal, we have a bunch of tabs at the top. One of them is called resources. And if you click on that, you can actually pull down recipes and workouts. So it's a whole library of each one. And one thing that I absolutely love about this portal is if you click on the recipes tab and you go to that resource page, if you search, there's like, I think there's over 500 recipes. There's a lot on there. They're, they all look delicious. I scroll through it all, a lot. <laughs> I'm very familiar with the recipe page. But what you can actually do is you can search by specific things that you're looking for. For example, if you are looking for a recipe with more fiber, you can search the word fiber and it will bring up recipes that are in this library that have uh, you know, higher amounts of fiber or are fiber heavy foods. So when you pull that up, you know, there's a, a lot of like apple based items, like things like that. It's, they look delicious. Um, you can search things like vegetarian or um, I think you can actually do meatless. But then once you do that, something that's really amazing is you can actually save some recipes or workouts if you want in your favorites so that they're always there on the portal. So again, just going back to if you put a little bit of extra time looking on the portal, finding these things, knowing where they are, you can even save some as your favorites. Maybe you, instead of scrolling through Netflix, you decide you're going to make a home cooked meal and you don't know what to make. You can go on your wellness portal, find your favorites tab and that recipe that you found one day and it'll be right there. So a lot of the portal works that way. I highly recommend it. Um, I just wanted to give you a high level overview of what we offer. But if you do have any other questions or questions about the challenges, how to get points, what your incentives are, um, if you want an accountability buddy, if you want me to connect you with other people in the district or uh, other wellness vendors that we do have, absolutely reach out to me. I love connecting with you guys. Uh, you can always post your questions on the social wall. It is kind of like a professional wellness related Facebook. Something that employees have been doing recently is posting their um, weekly or monthly goals that they have for themselves, which I absolutely love. Um, I like everybody's comments and posts because <laughs> I read them all day and I just love engaging with you guys. But absolutely let me know if you do have questions about any of this or you would like me to show you how any of it works and uh, maybe give you some more information on how it can be beneficial to you. And I will say it is free. So none of the wellness program uh, needs any sort of cost to you or um, you know affects you in any way like that. But um, we do have a lot of great resources on there for you. And my last little bit before we open it up to questions, I do also want to say the best wellness advice that I could give to everyone is to find things that you like and enjoy doing, because that is really going to be what makes a difference with sustainable behavior change over time. If you hate exercising in the morning, don't do it. <laughs> you are never going to like exercise in the morning if you already don't. Then if you don't like certain vegetables, but you know you want to get your vegetables, do a little bit of research, search on the recipe tab, find something that's really delicious that you love because it's going to make you feel better and you're going to feel better about your decisions. And then you're going to be excited to share that information and those wins with other people. And it's going to hold you accountable for the long term. So that's just a little piece of wellness advice that I love to give out. But again, connect with me anytime. I'd love to talk to you guys. But that is all I had. So I will turn it back over to Lee just to wrap up everything. Thank you so much, Jamie. Um, guys, this has been great. I hope that you all got some really meaningful information. Um, I know that we were short on time and there was a lot of information that went into it. So I have included um, Joy, Jamie, Christina, and myself's contact information, both email and phone number. Um, if you have any further questions that you want to talk about, I know we weren't able to really elaborate on some of those items, and um, we will be reaching out to those of you who had uh, questions that we didn't essentially want to answer that would be recorded on the Zoom. So we're definitely going to be following up with each of you, and I really hope you guys enjoyed today, and we're going to uh, schedule the next one. We're thinking it's, these are going to be bi-monthly, so keep an eye out. It will be on the TVs at headquarters. It will be in the um, benefits app that Christina and Jamie spoke of. 
and they will be um, hopefully in the staff weekly newsletters going forward. Um, so you guys will know about them and we are so grateful for you. And if anyone uh, doesn't have any further questions, um, like I said, we're gonna reach out to you tomorrow or in the days coming and hope you all have a wonderful day and stay warm. All right, guys, thank you so much. Hi, Amy, I see your question. Um, I can email you a link to the portal. Do you know if you've ever logged in before? The wellness portal, the Be Well Do Good? Yes. Yeah, I use, I use that a lot, but I, I can't find the recipes on it. Okay. Um, let me. I mean, I just opened it right now while you were talking about it, and I didn't see the recipes. Okay. Are you on the app or on a desktop? On the app. I'm on my phone. Okay. Let me see. I don't have my work phone with me right now. Um, would it be okay if I, I gave you a call and we walked through it together? Sure. Or if it's not as good on the app, if it's on the desktop, I guess I just open that and see if I can find it. Okay, I can show you either way, but it might be easier when I have mine in front of me so I can actually okay. see it and then I can tell you where to go. Okay, like, great. Perfect. Okay, I I'm sorry. Right I now. got here really late right at the end because I tried to open the Zoom in a different go-to meeting thing and it was a big pain to log in. I should have just opened this app and I could have joined easily. So... We're going to um, post this to the Benefits and Wellness YouTube page. So all the okay. information that came prior to when you were able to join, you'll be able to check it all out there. Okay. Sounds okay. great. Thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you so it. much. Bye.